statewide woman rights organization held a Martian rally on Sunday, October 13, 2019 in downtown Erie, calling for the impeachment of President Donald J. Trump. The rally in March was held from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. at Perry Square. It was hosted by Women's March Pennsylvania, a chapter of the Women's March Network, which calls for women to have parity and equality at all levels of leadership in society. My name is April Weiss. I'm the regional organizer and head of social media for Women's March Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm here today because, because of this, uh, because of Trump. We organized an impeach, impeachment rally. It's nationwide on today. Uh, all over the country, there's rallies everywhere, bringing together for the same cause to get Trump out of the White House. Uh, how do you feel about the turnout? Uh, I'm actually okay with the turnout. Uh, as the gentleman said, it starts with one. And you know, it just kind of builds from there. Do you see yourself having another rally? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe. Uh, the directive for today's rally came from the National Organization. They asked me to throw something together. So we may, we may not. Did you hope the local population would get behind you? Maybe make it up to a rally? I am all for it. I am all for it, personally. If somebody wants to have another rally, I'll come speak, I'll come yell. I'll write speeches, whatever. And I think we'll be on our way to where we got to be. Have an email address. Uh, my, not for Women's March, on you know, but my personal email that I for my business. Well, it, well I if you prefer to be contacted through the Women's Group. Yeah, actually, you can get on Facebook, and I am the social media person. So if you message me through Facebook, I'll get it there. The McKean County Chairwoman of McKean County, Pennsylvania, was at was at their county fair. And at that county fair, she was in her booth, Democratic booth. She had pamphlets and handouts. The Republican booth was right across from there. They had everything under the sun. They had flags, they had banners, they had everything. They got that. Hold out. I can't swear about it. I don't call that man a president. I don't call him mister. And I don't capitalize his team. All right. All right. But what I have, I'm close to wrapping up, so I'll read you one thing. I am anti-Trump and very, very pro-choice. And another thing, words without action is just words. Please remember, our number one fucking list is to clean out the White House. We gotta remember to vote in every election. We have an election coming up beginning of November. Um, I hope you're all registered, right? Right? Yeah? Yeah? yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, make sure you check, go and check your registration. Uh, make sure that your address is right, that your party is right. The primary is going to be coming up before you know it. And I urge everybody to do what you can, uh, whether it's phone bank, door knock, um, talk to somebody that's maybe on the line. Uh, don't be afraid. Uh, this is going to end soon, and we're going to have the White House back. You know, keep informed. So if someone comes at you with an issue, you can say, now wait a minute. That's not right. I know better. You can look here. You know, that's facts are what's important, although, you know, not to the White House. <laughs> but anyway, I thank everybody for coming. Keep up the good work, and we'll see you soon.
Hi guys, <laughs> my name is Pam Nolan. I'm. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Okay. So, I just wanted to make a comment uh, about people comparing Republicans and Democrats and saying that they're both the same. And I want to remind people that yes, there's too much money in our politics. I also want to remind people that the Republicans have no interest in reforming election uh, funding. The Democrats do. But since we can't get that done, the Democrats have to take money also. So I just want people to think about that and not fall into this trap of thinking that the Republicans and the Democrats are the same. We got to vote for Democrats. I was raised to split my ticket. I was raised to research every candidate and vote for the one that I thought was going to do the best. But now I vote straight Democrat because we got to get the Republicans out so that we can actually get something done for the, the actual people and not for just the wealthy people. That's all. Thanks. My name's Kathleen Johnson, and I just want to say I always had great pride in our flag for these years. Now when I see it, it is an embarrassment. I am embarrassed for our country and everybody else around the world that is laughing at us. Our very first cruise to Alaska. We sat with a couple from Australia. And they wanted to know, what do you think of your new president? And we just rolled our eyes. And you know what they did? They started laughing. They said, we find him entertainment. He's a clown. That is what the other people think. He is not a president. I respect the office of the presidency. He is not a president. He is a dictator. Everything about him is me, 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 me. No matter what happens, whatever tragedy there is, it's how wonderful I am and how well I've handled it. And he hasn't handled anything. And he makes up his own rules. He makes up his own facts. We need to get him out of there. Thank you. My name's Keith Watson. And I just like to briefly say that a lot of our Democratic leaders have made a political calculation that impeachment is not the way they want to go. They've sort of been dragged into the process, but their heart's not really in it. And there's a lot of other people that think that impeachment is the way to go because it's the right thing to do. And there may be some voters lost because of impeachment, but there'll be voters lost without impeachment. And if we want to be the party that is worth voting for in the next election, then we have to prove that we're worth it. And if we're not going to fight, then why should anyone turn on and vote for Democrats? Because what they're saying is true. We don't fight for anything. And we may not get them out of office because Mitch McConnell's not going to do the right thing. That doesn't mean we can't do the right thing. Doing the right thing has its own power. And if you lose, you lose. But you do the right thing. And, you know, then you go to bed and you, you sleep good at night and you look at yourself in the mirror. You do the right thing because it's the right thing. This guy deserves to go down. If Mitch McConnell won't do the right thing, I don't expect he will. But that doesn't mean we don't. And if we want to be worth voting for in the next election, then we've got to be worth voting for. Otherwise, people are not going to care. And you're not going to convince the other side. The only hope you have of getting him out in the next election is turning out the people that are not terribly excited. Make them want to turn out because the Democrats fight. And that's what they want. They want somebody that will fight. So let's be that party. And next election, we're going to throw all of them out like that. Yeah. Okay? Anybody else have anything they want to say? Hi. Hi. Good afternoon. My name's Betsy Seabog, and I've lived in Siri all my life. I've always been proud to be an American, proud to be a Democrat, and generally proud of the people that live here in Erie. What I am seeing here today are people that care. But unfortunately, what we have happening in Washington is exactly what happens when people don't care. 
evil prevails when good people do nothing. We've heard that many times in our life. When we have to take a fight against cancer, or juvenile diabetes, or other such causes. What cause can be greater than keeping America free and letting people live the lives that they want to? I ask that all of you get at least 10 people to vote. I ask that you carry voter registrations with you so that when you meet somebody that isn't registered, you can register them there and on the spot. Thank you. I grew up in this county, um, went to school in Edinburgh, went to graduate school in South Carolina, moved to Colorado, used my education, became a consultant and a writer, and all this because of being in this country and, and just trying to be the best, be best. Yeah, we get it. So now today, our troops are leaving Syria. I watched a video of a woman being stoned to death who was an advocate for equality in Syria. She was a Kurd. We've abandoned the Kurds. They're being attacked, and we've been we were there for them for the for how years now. And they're being killed, and our soldiers have been told not to do anything. And they are leaving as we speak. Why? Because Donald Trump has a hotel in Turkey. Why? Because Russia has asked Donald Trump to do this. Our president is under complete control of Russia, of Vladimir Putin. Complete control. They have compromise that would humiliate him if it's even possible at this point. I don't know if he can really humiliate this man, but it's, it seems like what they have on him must be that bad. He's, yeah, I mean, that, it, he's an American. So yeah, he's arrogant. We've learned to be arrogant as Americans. This is who we've become. So few of us are paying attention to what's really going on globally and only seeing the little bits of what are happening here. And it's so much bigger than this. And it's so much bigger than what happens in the next election even. We have to, we have to do better. We have to just be kind and, and teach our children to be kind and teach our children that what's happening is not America. This is not us. And the world is watching. The world is loved. And we are getting smaller in their eyes. We're, they're scared. They're scared. We should be scared. They're, they're scared that we're not going to protect them anymore. What's happening in Ukraine is just like what's happening in Syria on a different scale. We're walking away. We're not standing up for those that we're obligated through treaties and promises to protect. We asked Ukraine, take your, let, you don't want those nukes anymore. You don't need them. And they agreed. They don't have their nukes anymore. And now what do we do? We let Russia march right in and take Crimea and take Eastern Ukraine. This is us. It's disgusting. I, I, I'm so scared every day. I, I, I'm scared for our country, but I, I'm, I'm scared for the children. I'm scared for the world. The environment is going to get us in the end anyway, but at least we could try to protect humanity and, and take care of each other. It, it, I'm just baffled and, and horrified every day with how farther and farther this country has gone into in a, a dark, dark place. And I'm seeing that the only people here are people old enough to remember what was coming. You've got to remind everyone what happened. And, and this is, it's World War II on another scale all over again in little bits and pieces around the world. 
and we're, we're just stepping back further and further and further. And we're, we're going to be doomed. I, I don't, I just don't, I know you're all looking around and saying, where is everybody? And I'm saying the same thing. Can I tell you, I looked at the crowd in D.C. this morning. It wasn't much bigger than this. Oh, I vote. I voted all my life. I voted every time I could. I've, I've, I've been on committees and, and, and shaken president's hands, even Bill Clinton, which I then recently thought maybe I should have done that. But, you know, that was a long time ago, and we didn't know stuff then. And that's another thing. You know, we keep going back to what, oh, well, Bill Clinton this and this and that. You know, half the people voting today weren't even voting then. They were too young. With, why are they be dealing with that kind of issue? It just doesn't make any sense. We need to make sure everybody's getting registered to vote. Our school system is no longer getting our kids registered to vote. They don't even have civics class. They don't understand why we need to vote. As someone who ran city council and lost by 187 votes, every vote counts and we need to get out the fight. We have to make sure that we're being engaged. We have to make sure that we're bringing in the next generation. So if you got to take your grandkids to the polls with you, then take your grandkids to the polls with you because Amen. they need to know why we need to go to the polls. As a person who was Puerto Rican and Mexican growing up, my family didn't vote. And I never understood why. And I would ask my grandma, why don't we vote? Why don't we participate? We watch the Spanish channel and every six months we see some type of election going on. Why are we not involved? And her answer was always, we just don't. Well, I'm tired of the we just don't because we need to. Things are being taken away from us right under our eyes. Amen. And we see it. We need to be involved. We have to do this. A hundred years ago, women couldn't vote. African Americans couldn't always vote. We need to make sure that they understand that this is something that we have to fight for. And even to this day, even though we can vote, the vote is still repressed. We have the Electoral College. We have Jerry Mandrick. We have to get out and vote and elect candidates who are going to fix these problems. So we need to make sure we're doing our part. It used to be we don't talk about religion and politics, but we have to talk politics because politics is really determining our value of life in our communities and in our country. So thank you for people who were able to come out. Hopefully the next get together a little bit bigger because we need to make sure that we are getting our friends and family involved, period. Too much money is going to the top. It needs to go to the lower and middle class. We are going to spend the money. We are going to make the economy better. It's not the rich people that are going to save their money and put it in the stock market, which helps nobody. We are the ones who are going to make America great again. Not Donald Trump or any of these Republicans or every, every senator in Washington is a millionaire. It's got to stop. Bring back the people to run this country. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ed. I don't want to make this long. I just want to remind you all that you're good people for being here. And this is about impeachment. We need to keep the pressure on. You need to call your congressman. Keep the pressure on. This is about impeachment. Now's the time to do it. It's the right time. Broken the law, it's obvious, so call your yeah. congressman, keep the pressure on. Thanks. Impeach Trump. Impeach Trump. Impeach Trump. Now. 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 Impeach Trump.
nation. We foundations. And so we have to stand on that. And that that's what we're fighting for. So don't worry about who's not here. This is enough to call your legislator. Call your congressman. Call your neighbor's congressman in Ohio, down in Allegheny County. Let's call them all. We need our democracy to work. We need the House to do the only thing, the only legitimate thing that they can do, and that's to impeach Donald Trump now and hold a trial in the Senate so that we can put America back on the road to a full democracy so the rest of the world will respect our right to vote and what, and what it stands for. So again, don't worry about the people who are not here. Don't worry about the people who are not here. This is enough right here to change the world. It all starts with what? The journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. And this is it. And that a lot of people didn't realize we were coming down here today. Hopefully from today the they'll see that there are some people willing to stand up, willing to speak out. Impeach Trump. Impeach Trump. Impeach Trump. Impeach Trump. That's what it's going to take, ladies and gentlemen, women. I have six sisters, and a daughter, and a daughter, and eight. I know firsthand what women can do. Okay, let's get it done, women. Let's get it done. You can get it done. Who has been any more insulted by the president than we have today than women? You know, we ain't even got to talk about it. Let's just do it like Nike. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Impeach Trump. Impeach Trump. Impeach Trump. Impeach Trump. Impeach Trump. Impeach Trump. Oh, it's for Gary you want? Yeah. Oh. Right. Do you want me to put it back out there? <laughs> put it back down? Yes. I'll take care of this one. Well, we'll see how this one goes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm all about it. Okay. My name is Gary Orr, and uh, as a citizen, I voted every election, every election, 
every election counts. Every vote counts. And uh, I'm happy to be here today in support of this rally, this effort led by women to impeach Donald Trump for what he has done and the direction that he's taken this country and the, uh, the many, many uh, examples of breaking the law. I, uh, I believe that uh, we have the power to change the direction that this country is headed. Uh, we're a much more peaceful, kind, loving uh, country than uh, what has been uh, reflected across the world over the last uh, three years. And uh, I just uh, hope and pray that every citizen recognizes the true gift of a uh, free election and, uh, and, a, and, a, and the right to vote. And I uh, hope that every eligible citizen uh, exercises that right uh, so that we can save our democracy. Oh, I have six sisters and a daughter and uh, kind of follow what women do. And uh, they thought that uh, this rally was important enough for women to take a stand uh, and demand uh, that our elected representatives uh, do the thing that, uh, uh, that the law uh, affords them the opportunity to do, and that's to uh, hold our president accountable. I just forwarded you. And, uh, so I'm here today in support of those women and, and their efforts. I think uh, in a, uh, a time when we celebrate the historical rights of women, it's only fitting that the women uh, take the lead and get out here and, and, uh, and express freely with courage uh, that this is the right thing to do. Impeach Trump. Impeach Trump. Impeach Trump. Yes. And then the elections, we got to get in there in between and get people to vote. Get so people registered. Keep we have to pound the page. Yeah. Do the hard work, about? break the sweat. Oh. The fact that this man got into office anyway is just reprehensible. I, I mean, before he even got in, he was talking about sexual assault. And it's okay because he's famous. And that's not okay. If it were anybody else, they would have never made it as far as he did. Um, if you care about your daughters and you know your sisters, even your sons, you know you got to have a good role model. It used to be, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be president. I don't want my kids to be president like the one we got now. No. Hell no. Uh uh. But my daughter, she's 21. She's voting age. She votes like me, but she has her own opinions. But you know, it, it makes me supremely uncomfortable putting her out in the world as a young adult with, you know, I want to keep my baby safe and I got to trust other people to feel the same way. But if men are disrespecting women, this is everything, but he's doing a crap job from day one with the Muslim bans and his poor choice of a Supreme Court justice. <laughs> For the people, right? The people. From the people, of the people, by the people, for the people. Y'all did a wonderful job. Keep it up.